UMBC retriever hitters are able to get through that big Panthers block. Madone to serve, and we are underway here at the Fitz. Set goes up back to the outside in the pin block, and as we mentioned, Emma Monks, half of that block there, gets the first point on the board. But unfortunately, that block attempt going out of bounds, so that'll be a big key that I was just talking about. Can they use the block as well? Can you tool it off of the block if you're UMBC? How are you able to get around it? In the middle, Monks again tools the block that time, and Pitt finally does get the first point on the board there at Monks on the killing end of that one. And we talked about what Monks is able to do defensively, but she also has been very good offensively as well for these Panthers early on in the season. Vasquez Gomez to serve for the Panthers, the native of Puerto Rico. Aaron's set there. UMBC's got to scramble to get it over, and Pitt's got a chance here in the middle again for Monks, and she picks up her second kill already. Seems to be a theme early with Haiti Tautua'a, the one of the great freshmen on this Panthers team, going to Emma Monks early and often. Tautua'a, the latest name in a long line of Hawaiian setters for the Panthers. That's a service error there, so the retriever is able to knot it up at two and will get serve again here. So you talk about how UMBC can sort of stay within arm's length of pit in this match. We've seen it a couple times, a couple errors so far from the Panthers. That's going to be one thing you want to capitalize on if you're the Retrievers as Pitt able to get another kill there on the inside there with Babcock, one of those freshmen starting up front. Yeah, UMBC will, will be undersized in this match for sure, but it's about what you can do against a bigger team. And it's all those things that we talked about. You have to make sure that you have good passing, good serving, great defense, and then you just have to really use the block against itself. Set outside looking for Belichich, and that one goes out of play. So a point there for UMBC off the deflection, and we're knotted back up at three. Mia Belichich, one of the mainstays on this UMBC team coming back from last season. She had 399 kills. That's almost four per set with 44 aces to go along with 202 digs. Grubisic Chabo. Serve goes long. So a couple errors on both sides early. Maybe still trying to find their footing so far in this one. 4-3 lead for the Panthers as Babcock will serve. We're going to touch on this all night. Babcock and Stafford especially. Two freshmen coming in. We talked about Bazzari out, Gray out for the Panthers from last year. But these two freshmen have filled the roles really nicely, especially up front. Serve goes long there again, and another service error already. Two for the Panthers so far, one for the Retrievers. And we're level at four again. Another freshman on this Panthers team coming in, Blair Bayless checks in. A KO in as well for the Panthers as UMBLC will serve. Up to the inside, Wokolo. Good dig there to keep that one alive for the Retrievers. Panthers with another chance on the other side. Wokolo again, another dig. But unable to get that one over, so Wokolo picks up the point for the Panthers. Those were some mean swings yeah. from Chiamaka Wokolo. Straight off of the face of Kamini Conte. And then a great dig on the back end as well. Set back to the outside and out of play. That one coming from Belushich again. First attacking error of the night for either team. Set to the outside, dig there from Mosley, also into the game for the Panthers. A little bit of a change up and they're going to call, I believe, a net violation and Pitt will pick up a point. That one actually hit the, the antenna as Belushich swung. So once that ball contacts the antenna, that is out and that went off of the hand of Belushich. And there's an ace for the Panthers. 4-0 scoring run now for Pitt. So. Level at four, and since then, 
Panthers have scored four consecutive. Tory Stafford now eight service aces on the season. Little trouble there trying to set that one up for the retrievers. And it's one of those things you want to clean up on on the road against the top 10 team. Those sets and kills just un not really coming now for the retrievers as the Panthers go up five. And I feel like a lot of what this first set has been about is errors on both sides. But what we've seen as of late is a lot more errors on the side of UMBC. But also you have to credit what the Panthers have been able to do. Some really, really great swings offensively. I mean, the Panthers have four kills on five attempts. And on the other side of that, the Retrievers just two kills on six attempts with three errors. And that's big. They have three hitting errors and also a service error as well. So if, when you look at that, that's four points that they've handed over to the Panthers already in this first set. UMBC hitting negative 167, Panthers hitting 800. So maybe lucky to be down just five early on in this first set. For the Panthers, Monks with two kills, Babcock with a kill as well. We'll talk about her a little bit. The number 27 recruit in last year's class. She's been a big part of Pitt's defensive success at the net front. Just a really impressive start to her Pitt career. Going along with her and Story, Tori Stafford, two really impressive freshmen coming in and really immediately making an impact for Dan Fisher's squad. And on the other side for UMBC, something that we have to note and will note throughout the evening is the absence of Asia Miller. She's really a jack of all trades for this UMBC team. She plays outside hitter in the front row, then becomes the setter when she rotates to the back row, had a triple double a few weeks ago, and has won a major conference award at every position besides middle. She was the setter of the year, the libero of the year, an all championship outside hitter, but unfortunately got hurt a few matches ago at Princeton, so we will not see her tonight. Miller with at least four kills and at least 17 assists in five of six matches so far this season. That one misses long. And yet another attacking error for the Retrievers. Now a 6-0 run for the Panthers, and they'll continue to serve with Stafford. Outside again, able to tool the block that time. And Veronica Vrashinska, a really great swing. And that, that was against a double block of the Panthers, but just able to find a little crack between that double block and get that point down. Vrashinska, the senior from Poland, able to get on the board there as Pitt returns the favor on the inside. That time with Blair Bayless. Bayless, the freshman from Plano, Texas. Had half a dozen kills earlier this season against Montana. Her career high so far in her very short pit career. Mosley to serve for the Panthers now up 11-5. And that point was going to be the Panthers regardless. Called a double contact, but Emma Monks and Blair Bayless were all over that attack attempt by UMBC. Mosley to serve again. Set grows to Grubishich Chabo, and she's able to convert to cut that lead down to six. And Mosley, who was just serving for the Panthers, not the typical libero that we've seen all season, as that has been Emmy Klicka, but Mosley getting a chance in this match to really show what she can do as she is a fifth-year senior coming from within the ACC at Virginia Tech. Akeo, okay, nice job there to keep that one alive, but the whistle blows and... Into the net call against the Retrievers. Unfortunate as that really was a tough play for the Panthers. Lexis Akeo trying to go up with a one-handed set and then Emma Monks not really on the back end of that, able to get a great contact, but unfortunate for UMBC as Bird Alford was in the net. Another one of those unforced errors that we talked about earlier on. Outside, nice play there by Stafford to keep it alive. Outside, Vasquez Gomez goes down the line and in to pick up the point. And we talk about the freshmen for this Panther team and have so far, but then you have a redshirt senior in Valeria Vasquez Gomez coming in, a 2023 preseason All-ACC team player. Tau Tua'a serving again on the outside. Panthers block that one, another attempt Goes back to Grobishich Chavo. 
That one misses long, so the Panther is able to get up 15-6 here. Commanding lead so far in the first set. Tao Tua'a to serve again. And another attacking error. And it's been so hard for this Retrievers team because, as I've mentioned, they have that big block of the Panthers up against them, and they're trying to go over top of it. But, I mean, you look at some of these pit players. You have Tori Stafford on the outside at 6'4", Olivia Babcock at 6'5". You have B Blair Bayless at 6'2", Emma Monks at 6'4". I mean, all of these players, that's what you're trying to go over top of, and there's only so much space on the court. So if you're not able to get around it or through it, if you're going over top of it nine times out of ten, that ball's going to sail out of bounds. Yeah, Pitt also one of the best defensive teams in the country, too. have held opponents to a 129 hit percentage coming into today. Also 3.1 blocks per set, also one of the best marks in the country. You can't be having those unforced errors on the attack if you want to beat a team like Pitt, who's already going to be so strong defensively. you got to take advantage of your opportunities. Yeah, you have to put the ball on their side of the court and let Pitt make the mistakes, which is what we saw through the first seven or eight points of this match in the Panthers making the mistakes that let UMBC stay in it. But now it's been the complete opposite of that. We flipped and now it's a lot of the unforced errors from UMBC. And then quickly the Panthers were able to get to just hack on these points. Yeah, I remember earlier on at the break we were talking about Pitt's hitting percentage at 800. You're saying, okay, that's a pretty small sample size still early in the match. It's now 875, so the Panthers continuing to be extremely effective from the offensive side of things into the latter part of this first set here. 16-6, Tautua out of still serve for the Panthers. The native of Hawaii has 40 assists over her last two matches as well for Pitt. UMBC trying to break the run here. Tautua in the middle, and there's Tori Stafford. It's going to be hard to break anything when you have Tori Stafford oh. coming from the back row. Such a great decision there by Tao Tua and able to put the ball in the perfect spot for Stafford to just come from the back row, towering up with that swing. Boy, I'll tell you what, Stafford a freshman, but man, she can swing it. Off the pit deflection there, and UMBC finally picks up a point. If you remember, we were tied at four, so... It's still on a 14 to three run dating back to then. When UMBC was up 4-3. Retriever is finally able to gain serve again. Great swing there from Babcock and the Panthers go up 11. From one freshman to another. <laughs> And then you have Tautua'a setting. And then once we get another rotation or two, we'll probably see Blair Bayless back in. And this freshman class for the Panthers ranked eighth in the nation, which is the highest that has ever come in to the University of Pittsburgh. Babcock with at least 10 kills in five of her last seven matches as well. This group of freshmen running like a well-oiled machine for the Panthers. A little bit of an errant set there, and the Panthers take advantage. Once again, Babcock and company Able to get that one down, and it's now 19-7. Any player will gladly take a nice little overpass coming right at you to put back down on the opponent's court. And now we see Cat Flood coming into the match, it replacing Tori Stafford, so giving her a little bit of a break and getting Flood some swings on the outside. Vasquez Gomez to serve. Set to the middle and a good swing there from DeMarzi, she picks up her first kill. DeMarzi, the junior from Milan, Italy, started all 22 matches last season after coming off an injury in 2021. It's been an effective player for the Retrievers. Outside to Flood. Good dig there, UMBC keeps it alive and the Panthers regroup. Back to Flood. A strong swing there. A serve specialist Flood is, but she gets the kill there to bring the lead to 20 to 8. I mean, we see what she does with her tough serve, but my goodness, what a swing on that last one. During the rally, not able to quite get all her power behind it, but that last one sure had every bit of the power behind it from Cat Flood. <laughs> that look with Flood at the outside hitter position, not necessarily something you see a whole lot 
from Dan Fisher's squad, but she takes advantage of the opportunity there. It'll be Dylan Griffin to serve now. Outside into the pit block again. Flood and Wokolo combining there. We're going to say it went out of play. So UMBC gets the point. Trying to stay alive here in this first set. It'll be Howard to serve. Kautua to the outside, and Babcock picks up another kill. That's her fourth of the night. Olivia Babcock still three for three on the attack so far. And the thing the Panthers do so well is such a balanced offense. You have Babcock with four kills, Emma Monks with three, Valeria Vasquez Gomez with two. So they really spread it around, which makes it hard for opposing defenses. Another block from the Panthers. That one will play. It looked like Tao Tua got up there and able to make this 22 to nine. And that feels really good as a setter. I mean, you, you're running around on the court, you're making all the plays happen, and then you get to have that satisfaction of getting the block as well. Tao Tua showcasing her versatility there as Babcock will serve this one to the corner, but just a little long there. So it'll be a service error to Err. It's now 22 to 10. Changes coming on both sides here. Monks checks back in, along with a KO for the Panthers. And it looks like I have a bit of a stoppage here for a second on the substitution. It looks like Vershinska will check back in for the Retrievers. Okay, outside for Flood, and man, she has looked good so far on that outside hitter position. And that just adds to the conversation of the depth that these Panthers have. I mean, you talk about Valeria Vasquez Gomez, the redshirt senior, and then the freshman in Tori Safford, and then you have Juliana Dalton who has played outside, and then you add in Cat Flood who really has just been a serving specialist, but man, does she have a powerful swing. Two kills now for Flood. Outside, and that one misses again. So Pittle gets set point here at 24 to 10. And you could see kind of the frustration there from Mia Belushich as she took that last swing, just kind of wondering what she can do to be able to get the ball down on the Panthers' court. Cat Flood back in her element here with the serve. Okay, it was set to the outside. Vasquez Gomez, nice block there from UMBC to stay alive. Mosley back to Vasquez Gomez again, another block. As Flood tries to keep it alive, but UMBC gets the point to extend this set. Really great job there at the net by UMBC. Some strong swings coming from the outside of, off the arm of Vasquez Gomez, but staying strong was that retriever's block. Set to the middle, Wokolo, strong swing there, and that'll do it for set number one. A really strong performance from the Panthers in the first set, 25-11. We're able to take a set from Virginia in their other game against an ACC opponent. They're gonna have to clean up on those mistakes if they wanna do the same thing here today in Pittsburgh. To the outside, that one misses again, so another attacking error coming from Conte. But again, they said there's a deflection up front, so. UMBC able to get the point. They'll serve again here with Grubisic Cabo. That one just along the net and Pitt unable to find the boundary there and UMBC goes up too. UMBC a team who made the NCAA tournament last season after winning the America East Championship. Bowed out in the first round to Penn State after three sets. Vasquez Gomez, strong swing there. Tautua to Monks, another block for the Retrievers. Their turn on the offensive, dig there from Stafford. Pitt tries to regroup from the outside with Babcock and another dig, but that one goes out of play. So Pitt able to get their first point of set number two with Babcock and her fifth kill of the night. And a better start for UMBC as they're able to get up 
to a 2-0 lead, just not able to really extend it any further than that. Here's Vasquez Gomez. Outside, Conte gets it over for the Retrievers. Back to Stafford. And that one into the net. So the receiving not necessarily there for the Retrievers early on, having some trouble there. And Pitt ties it up at two. And that really just puts you behind the eight ball. If you can't get a good pass, then that just sets your offense back. And when you're going against such a strong defense as the Panthers have, you really need to have crisp passes in order to be able to get a better attack. Good looking swing there from Conte, but the pit block coming up big again, and it's just out of play, it looks like, again. So Conte able to tool the block. And that's exactly what this UMBC team needs to have. We just talked about how they weren't having the good passing, got a good pass, then were able to get a quick set to that right pin and get the ball down. Talked about the height of Pitt earlier on, too. You might want to keep employing that strategy of trying to tool the block up front if you're the Retrievers. Back to Monks, makes no mistake there. Four kills for Emma Monks. And you have to love the aggression if you're head coach Dan Fisher from Emma Monks of just staying so active at the net and not letting that ball come across her so side as we now see her go back to serve. Monks second on the team with those four kills, only behind Olivia Babcock. Little mistake there, and Stafford takes advantage, and Pitt picks up the point. And nothing really you could do there if you're Saren Maiden, the setter for this UMBC team. That ball just going right over the top of the net and such an easy play there for Stafford. Another block for the Panthers. The set goes for Wokolo and she picks up another kill. How about the pass there from Emma Monks getting in there and able to get that ball up. Monks has shown to be a pretty versatile player so far in her time with the Panthers, as we mentioned, coming in after Bree Kelly rolled that ankle in Kentucky. And it's been a really valuable part of this team. That one a laser into the stands. And Emma Monks coming into this Panthers team as a grad student, played at Michigan State last year in 21 matches, had 133 kills, 72 blocks, both of those career highs, and I see her obliterating those career highs here this year with the Panthers. Monks with at least six kills and at least five blocks in every game since Kelly went down there. And another block for the Panthers to make it a 5-0 run here in set number two. This just all seems to happen so fast. This is exactly what we saw in the first set. A little bit tight through the first quarter of that first set. And then the Panthers just taking control from there. Pit block goes out again. Tori Stafford wanted that one. Yeah. You could see after that play, she knew she had it, just has to get that outside hand turned in. Just not enough there from Stafford as that ball was just wide. Comedy Conte having a pretty effective day so far for the Retrievers. That's her fifth kill so far of the night. A little trouble here for the Panthers, trying to get it back over and not enough on that one to reach the net there. The so UMBC crawling back into the second set here, now 5-7. Conte to continue her service here. Tautua again, Wokolo swings strong. Seen that combination a couple times so far here in set number two. Wokolo now Four kills to go along with four from Emma Monks and five from Olivia Babcock. Tautua picks up her 11th assist as well. Bit of an error again there on the set. And you have to credit that top spin serve of Olivia Babcock with causing trouble for the reception there from UMBC. Babcock to continue to serve here. 
We've said it a few times that it really is hard to believe that she's a freshman. And I guess a bit of a jinx there. She serves it into the net for another service error for the Panthers, but she'll come out here as UMBC crawls a little bit closer. Belusic now for the Retrievers. Set for Mikhail to Monks, who tools the block and able to get Pitt back on the board. And that was actually B Blair Bayless on the outside. It was Bayless, another one of the freshmen coming into the game for the Panthers in that outside hitter position. Outside again, and Vasquez, Gomez, and Wokolo combined for the block. Talked about their versatility a little bit up front with Vasquez, Gomez, and Wokolo. They've done a really nice job both defensively and offensively so far tonight. The serve received for UMBC costing them a few points here so far. Yeah, that one, an illegal back row attack. As the setter right now, Bird Alford, is in the back row, so she is not allowed to jump and contact the ball when it is above the net, and that's exactly what we saw there. It's that pat at that first pass was really tight. Strong swing there, good dig there from Mosley. Vasquez Gomez, and she's able to tool the block. Another bit of a run here for the Panthers. Now a 4-0 scoring run. We've seen this a few times in the first set. Now again in the second set, able to string a few points together and put a little distance between them and the Retrievers. Looking to snap that run here. A little bit short on the set there. UMBC's got a chance here. And once again, Vasquez, Gomez, and Wokolo combined for the block. Not much, not much of a chance when you have that block in front of you, especially with the experience. Two redshirt seniors going up against there. That one with the swing, Emily Ferketic, who is a player for this UMBC team that is actually from the city of Pittsburgh. Working on her PhD as well, an extremely impressive student athlete for the Retrievers. A KO to the outside, Bayless again able to find the corner. So another one of these pit freshmen who's been pretty impressive so far in her time in the game so far. Timeout for UMBC, but getting back a little bit to Emily Ferketic that we were talking about for this the UMBC Retrievers team. As we said, she hails from the city of Pittsburgh, went to Avonworth High School, actually a neighboring high school to mine, very familiar with Avonworth. And she is going for her PhD, not only any PhD, <laughs> but a PhD in theoretical physics. And you talk about a player that is smart, and you talk about players that have the court smarts about what they can do on the court, but Emily Forketic might be one of the most intelligent people that I've ever known as <laughs> she's getting her PhD in theoretical physics, and at the same time, playing Division I volleyball. So just credit to her and what she's been able to do, experience a lot in her in her young life, going through a lot in her personal life to be able to be doing what she's doing and having the success that she has on the court, plus off of the court and everything. Just a tremendous person along with a tremendous player. Yeah, we were talking to Casey Kreider a little bit about her before the start of the game today. And she he said, everyone kind of just knows her as the girl who makes physics puns on the team. So. The, yeah, the, the awkward girl the that'll, that'll trip over her shoelaces <laughs> and kind of wander around, give us random physics facts. But, I mean, he, he couldn't speak more highly and, and couldn't have had a bigger smile on his face when talking about Emily Ferketic. Play resumes here. UMBC trying to work their way back into set number two. Outside for Vasquez Gomez into the block. It has been pretty effective so far in this set for the Retrievers. Howard to serve again. Oh, 
A KO to the middle. Strong dig there to keep that alive from Belusic. On the outside, looked like Grubisic caught Chabo. Great swing there on the outside. One of the few freshmen that we have on this team. We talked about them bringing back 11 of 12 players, but also added a few freshmen just like this Panthers team, and they're getting a great kill. Two kills so far for Grubisic Chabo. Vasquez Gomez again down the line and in. Vasquez Gomez has been picking those corners so far down the line and pretty effective so far, kill number five for her. Vasquez Gomez loves going down the line, hitting those deep shots. She's really gotten great at finding those holes on the court. 2023 preseason all ACC team for Vasquez Gomez. That one misses long and another attacking error from UMBC puts Pitt up nine. Going back to Vasquez Gomez, a pretty interesting story for her, obviously, from Puerto Rico, coming into this program. Wasn't necessarily expected to fit into the rotation as much as she has so far this season, and even last season, coming in and just really having a huge impact on that team that went to the Final Four. And she really erupted last season, a 2022 second team AVCA All-American and Volleyball Mag.com third team All-American. As you said, coming from Puerto Rico, all four of her siblings also play the sport of volleyball, but her dad played professional basketball in Puerto Rico. So a very athletic <laughs> family. And you talk about an athletic family when you look at the bench, talking to the players right now, Kamlani Akeo and her sister, Lexis Akeo. Kamlani, a great setter for this Panthers team for a number of years, then Lexis came in. And now, as you mentioned, now we have Haiti Tautua'a hailing from Hawaii as well. So a great pipeline that Dan Fisher was able to tap into with the players from Hawaii as he comes from California and he's able to get a lot of great players from California, including one player that we haven't seen so far today, Rachel Fairbanks, one of the setters for this Panthers team and kind of one of those do-it-all players as we talked about Asia Miller and what she's able to do for the UMBC Retrievers and be an all-around player. That's exactly what Rachel Fairbanks is for the Panthers, just taking a couple of games off, trying to get herself healthy before the Panthers start ACC play c coming up here soon. Really is impossible to overstate the impact that Dan Fisher's had on this program, widening that recruiting net so much, even out to Hawaii and the West Coast, and just bringing in so many effective players to Pittsburgh. And the big key for the Panthers is that he's been able to keep them. With the explosion of the transfer portal, and you see players moving all around to different teams, that these Panthers have been able to really keep players, but bring in a lot of key ones that they need. Another block there was Monks and Vasquez Gomez on that inside part of the net. Another 4-0 run for the Panthers, now up 19-8. And surprisingly, that's just the first block for Emma Monks. She's really done a lot and had a, a kind of a rare offensive showing as we see another <laughs> block this time give Emma Monks and Blair Bayless some credit. I think a lot of that was the freshman Blair Bayless though. UMBC having a really tough time trying to crack the code of this pit block so far. Set hit percentage now 500 for the Panthers and really saying something when that brings you down your match hit percentage. 585 on the match for the Panthers. Now a 5-0 scoring run, everything going right so far for Pitt. And it will be Mosley again. Flood back to that outside hitter position, but I'm going to call a net violation there, and UMBC picks up the point. And that one on Flood, a little confused there. She really didn't seem to think that she was in the net. Maybe it was on as she was turning or as she was going up or down, her jersey went into the net or something like that. A very common thing that you tend to see. Okay, oh, Flood looking for another kill there, but nice play by Conte to get the block and cut that lead down to 10. The combo of Conte and Ilieva coming up big in the double block there against a reserve player, Cat Flood. Conte so far still pretty impressive night for her hitting 333 with five kills. And Bayless able to tool the block. 
I think that one went off the head of the retriever that was attempting the block there. Grubisic Chabo tried to block that one, went between her arms, off of her head, and then out of bounds. A big point there for the Panthers. Tao Tua out of serve. Monks, another block there. And just like that, Emma Monks, I mentioned how she had just had one block, and now she has three. Yeah. Four kills to go along as well. She has been really impressive so far for the Panthers. We touched on her a little bit earlier, the transfer from Michigan State. As you mentioned earlier, Amanda, sixth nationally in blocks per set at 1.62, which and one also those, leads the ACC. And one of those players that comes into this pit program, and we like to call it the Fisher effect, <laughs> as Coach Dan Fisher is just able to really elevate players to the next level. When you look at this team, what he's been able to do early on in this season with Emma Monks, and then what he was able to do last season, bring in Courtney Bezzario, a great transfer from Iowa, but she went from great to Outstanding, amazing, you have plenty yeah. of superlatives to talk about what Courtney Bezzario was able to do for the Panthers last season. And then also a player coming off of last season's team in Serena Gray, who now plays oh, just casually for the U.S. national team. <laughs> and what they've been able to do to elevate their game once they come into this pit program. And you talk about this day and age in college athletics where the transfer portal is such a, a prevalent part of every program and pretty much every single sport. Dan Fisher is really been able to weaponize that and turn that into a, a real pro for this pit team. You talk about Courtney Brazario coming in last year from Iowa, turning her into a, a, a real superstar for this program. Continue to do the same thing this year on with Monks and others coming into the program. And not just a superstar in in on this pit team last year, Courtney Brazario, a national <laughs> player of the year, and what she was able to do was just incredible. And an ace there from Taltua. How about that? <laughs> You talk about the transfers, the freshmen on this pit team also a huge part of their success so far, and they're two points away from taking set number two. Second service ace of the night for Pitt. Down the line, Conte. And she's got a half dozen kills now for the Retrievers. Easily her best swing of the night. Comedy Conte with a bomb down that far sideline. Conte now hitting 400 on the night. Set go to the middle for Monks. Good save there from Mosley to keep it alive. Back on the outside and Babcock picks up another kill. And credit Logan Mosley on that one. A great block there from the Retrievers, but then Mosley just able to turn around quickly and get that ball to go up into the, and the crazy thing about it, she was turned around but able to get it right to IT to get that ball up. Cat Flood serving for the set here for the Panthers. Outside and that one out. It looks like, but the deflection keeps the retrievers alive in set number two. So Ilyeva will serve to stay alive. Nice dig there from Flood. Back to the outside with Stafford. And that'll do it. They have to get much better swings on the ball. And you feel like if UMBC is going to get some of that offensive momentum, it's going to be through Comedy Conte, who has six kills so far. Been impressive for them so far tonight. Emma Monk starts off the set with another kill. Her but the fifth of the night. But for UMBC, you need to have the offense go through Conte, but also you need some more kills coming from Mia Belushich as between her and Conte, that's really where the offense runs for this UMBC team. Just two kills for Belushich so far. Belushich hitting below the equator, negative 250 so far for her. The team as a whole at negative 67. That one out of play, but off the deflection, so UMBC evens it up at one. And that's what you're really going to have to do. We talked about a little bit earlier, sort of tooling that pit block with Monks and Babcock up front. With how tall this team is, you're not going to have a lot of luck trying to hit it over them from the front. And if you do go over them, 
more times than not, it's going to go out. But there's another error that we see, and all those unforced errors coming from UMBC. They have 17 attack errors to now go along with two service errors. So those are all free points that you're handing to the number eight team in the country in these Pitt Panthers. Belushich that time from the line, the service error, and Pitt returns the favor with one of their own. And that gets, gets a head shake from Dan Fisher as you never want to get a free point from your opponent and then hand them one right back. So it even uh, evens out at the end of the day. We're back even at two as Howard serves once again. Mosley set outside for Stafford. Strong swing, but a stronger block there from UMBC. It looked like Ilieva and others. Ilieva and Conte, who've connected a couple of times here tonight with a really strong block between the two and giving their team an early lead again here, three to two. Nice play from Tao Tua to get that set up for Stafford who takes advantage. Freshman to freshman connection. I mean, you think if, if players like Tao Tua and Babcock and Stafford stay with Pitt their whole career, just the amount of chemistry that they will develop over the next couple of years. You think about the skill level that they're already at and the fact that they've got potentially three more years after this one, that ceiling is insurmountably high. Nice swing there. UMBC able to get on the board and take the lead here in the third set at 4-3. Conte now moving to the back row, getting that last kill, leading all hitters here tonight with eight kills. And in comparison, her teammates only have, there's a couple of them with just two apiece. That time it was Ilieva cleaning up the slack. As UMBC picks up the point. And a little bit of sloppy passing from the Panthers, not able to get that first pass to target. Outside Stafford, strong block there to keep it alive. Back to Conte and she's blocked there by Monks. Blocked, but it actually went down on the Panthers' side. So huh. with the power of that swing from Conte, she was, it looked like it was greatly blocked by the Panthers, but with that power behind that swing, able to push it onto the Panthers' side. Conte, the grad student from Newcastle, Delaware, having a strong night. But Monk's able to get Pitt back in the swing of things here and picks up a point. Snapping a 3-0 scoring run for the Retrievers, so a little bit of life offensively for UMBC in this beginning part of the third set. Blair Bayless saying, I'll finish that UMBC runoff so that we can get the ball back. Set goes outside there. And Grubisic Cabo with her third kill. Grubisic Cabo coming into the night having 98 kills on the season. Now with that one at 101, so into triple digits and kills for Grubisic Cabo. The freshman from Slovenia as Pitt picks up the point there a strongly European-rooted UMBC team. Players from Turkey, Croatia, Italy, all across the globe coming down to Baltimore. Mosley with the serve here for the Panthers. And once again, doing a nice job there is Ilieva. And all starting off with a great pass for the Retrievers. That has so much weight in it when you're trying to run an efficient offense, getting that first pass to target. A KO to Monks, and she makes no mistake there. Monks continuing her strong night. She's got a half dozen kills now, hitting over 650. And Pitt trails only two now. Got a few Panthers so far tonight with some gaudy hit percentages. Babcock at 857. Blair Bayless as well, also at 800. Set outside, nice job there from DeMarzi. Beautiful slide there. And that's what you have to do if you're UMBC is get this Panthers block moving. Keep them on their toes so that they don't know 
where the ball is going, and they can't camp out to try and get the block. DeMarzi, not the biggest player up front, but she's been effective so far tonight and has hit over 400 in each of her last two matches coming into today as well. Outside, nice dig there from Mosley. In the middle, Stafford, and the block for UMBC once again. It's DeMarzi as well as Belusic. Marcy, as you said, not the tallest middle blocker, only standing at six foot tall, but she can get up and has found herself in the right place at the right time a number of times here in this match. Has more than six kills in three of her last five matches, but there's another error there for UMBC. And when you get that momentum, especially in an environment like this, you got to try and hold it for as long as you can and can't take those errors like we just saw there to turn it back over. It's difficult, though, with how many great servers there are on this Panthers team and arguably one of the best at the service line right now in Vasquez Gomez. Set outside that one off the deflection and UMBC picks up the point there. And you could see the Panthers players very adamant that there was not a touch. And we will have the first challenge of the night coming from Dan Fisher. So Belushic on the kill there for now. Couldn't really tell from up here if that one did, in fact, get deflected or not, but it was certainly close. See a pretty pivotal point of this third set here. If you're UMBC, you've gotten out to a little bit of a lead here, trying to establish a little bit of momentum and trying to take a set here on the road against the top 10 team. Pretty critical call here to try and put a little bit of distance between you and the Panthers. These plays always so difficult as well with how quickly this game is played and with all of the moving parts, you have, the you have the ball coming from the arm of the hitter and then going through the block. But as that's happening, when you're watching the replay, all of those things are happening as one as, at once. So that block is actively moving forward as the ball is coming towards it. So very difficult to see if there was a touch in these cases. Dan Fisher, someone who's had a lot of success with these challenges over the last few years. So if he does I it, personally have not. <laughs> Very bad at calling these, Zach. Yeah, I can I can get in that same boat there. It's it really doesn't matter the sport either. I've done baseball and volleyball. I've I've been wrong the vast majority of the time on these kind of reviews. That's why I always like to say that's why I'm sitting up here <laughs> and talking about the game rather than being down there in one of the blue shirts. And yeah, they have a much tougher job than us necessarily sitting up here, but but I'll tell you what, they do a great job with how quickly this game is played. Yeah. More times than not, their calls are accurate, especially with in and out on the lines, uh, the sidelines, the, the, the back lines as well. Just a great job. These, these officials really, really do a nice job making sure that they keep everything fair and even as we have Nathan Mahaven and Scott Thompson as our referees tonight. Talk about how fast the sport moves. I mean, you get especially when you get into ACC conference play, you see the ball just flying around. You blink and the point's over. These referees really do have a pretty tough job. And the challenge won by Dan Fisher. So trusting his players, as they said, there was no touch. And they were right. So the two-point swing goes the way of the Panthers. It's now 10-8. And a big swing as the UMBC went from having a four-point lead to now a two-point lead. UMBC yet to score more than 12 points in a set so far. Two points away from doing just that already here in the third set. Outside Stafford goes with the changeup. Nice dig there to keep it alive. Mosley can't get a handle on that one, and UMBC picks up yet another point. Doing a pretty nice job here in this third set, hitting just under 600. It'll be Belusic to serve. Stafford again. Belushich with the dig. UMBC looking a little bit more organized defensively here in the third set. Stafford another try and she makes no mistake there. Conte just not able to get over to try to block Stafford in time and putting that ball away in a really great rally. Probably one of the best that we've seen tonight between these two teams. UMBC able to keep the the ball alive on multiple times as well on the pit side. You give Stafford enough opportunity, she will convert. 
One of three Panthers tonight so far with a half dozen kills. To the outside. And Conte misses there. I love the aggressive nature of that swing, just not able to have the efficiency that you would like to see. Just the third hitting error for Conte to go along with her nine kills. She has been letting loose all night, and it's worked out for the most part for her. just doesn't there. So now a one-point lead for the Retrievers. Conte going with the fastball again. And she's back on the right side of things. Double-digit kills for her now at 10. I've been really impressed with the swing of Conte on both sides as we've seen her swing on that right side and the outside as well. Just so powerful, and you know what, that when she's going for it all, that it's going to be very hard to try to get that pass up. Outside, nice dig there from Howard, but she can't control it there. And another point for the Panthers from Olivia Babcock. Seven kills now for her. Seven seventy-eight hitting percentage. I think you'll take that pretty much every day of the week. But another service error here for the Panthers. We talked about that coming into this third set, Amanda, as an issue that they've been sort of trying to iron out a little bit. You talked about how it was mainly in the first set, but those issues sort of leaking into this third set here now. Sixth service error of the night for Pitt. Vasquez Gomez had a little bit of trouble with the serve receive there, and UMBC gets a chance now on the offensive side. Akeo in the middle for Wokolo. Outside again, and UMBC doing a really nice job continuing to tool that pit block. Rubisic Cabo picks up kill number four. Just taking advantage there of the high hands. And kind of an awkward swing, really, as she was on her way down and swinging up at it, which gave her that angle to hit it off the hands. Outside Bayless, strong swing from her again. Credit Lexis and Kayo on that as she was able to come across the court and get the dig up with her arms, not even able to get her hands on it for this set, using a bump set there, but getting into a great spot for Bay Bayless to put the ball away. Here's Stafford from the service line now. Akeo looking for Vasquez Gomez right down the line again. Kill number seven for her. UMBC has led for the vast majority of this set, but Pitt now within one here at 14-13. Got a chance to take the lead here. Vasquez Gomez again. Between two pit defenders there, it looked like Mosley was after it, but couldn't get a handle on it, and UMBC extends their lead to two. We'll take a timeout again here. UMBC still holding on to that lead, Amanda. As we mentioned, two first two sets, really nothing going for them positive. 25-11, 25-12, but got a 15-13 lead here in set number three. What can they sort of do to try and close this one out? Still 10 points away, but you got to like how you've been playing so far. They've done a much better job here in the third set, first with their passing, and then second with their offense. They've gotten a lot better swings on the ball, but again, like I said, it all starts with a pass. If you don't get a good first pass, you're not gonna get a great second contact, and then that makes it harder for any of your hitters to get a good swing on the ball. So getting that first pass for them in this third set here has been key, and then they've been able off of that to get much better swings, and in turn, have made a lot less errors and not just handing three points over to the Panthers. We've talked about the pit freshman a lot tonight. How about Julia Grubishish Cabo? Done a really nice job so far for the Retrievers. Also a freshman, as we mentioned, from Slovenia. Would like to cut down on the attacking errors for her so far this year, but has been a really major contributor so far in her first season in black and gold. And continues to be a strong presence, especially here in this third set. She will serve to resume play here.
UMBC at 6-4 and four on the season so far. Won their last game against Seton Hall. It's their third power conference game this season. Lost 3-1 versus Virginia and were swept against Penn State. Outside, Bayless continues her strong night. And again, you talk about balance for this Panthers team. Babcock and Vasquez Gomez each have seven kills. And then three players in Stafford, Bayless, and Monks each have six kills. Bayless now hitting 857 on the night. So a one point lead for the Retrievers. And that one misses. UMBC wants the deflection call. That one coming off the swing from Belusic. And it looks like we'll wait for the official call, but we will have a challenge. And we will, calling for that touch. And you can see on both sides, the Panthers adamant that they did not touch the ball, and then UMBC adamant that there was a touch on the play. So, again, these plays so difficult to call as everything happens so fast. And this one, I think, a lot tighter at the net. So, again, so many moving parts to these plays and trying to make the correct call. Casey Kreider having that conversation with the officials. It seemed like everybody on the court for UMBC immediately made the motion for their head coach to challenge it. So it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Second challenge of the night for either team, as you remember earlier on. Dan Fisher won that challenge in that third set. The only one other one so far tonight. A few stats so far from around this game. The leader in kills coming from UMBC with Conte. She's in double digits with 10. Next close is both on Pitt. Vasquez, Gomez, and Babcock with seven apiece. Pitt still hitting 523 in the match, while UMBC back above that Mendoza line, but still at 75. So a number they'd like to improve, but hitting 364 here in this third set. So they're making strides, just might run out of time in the progress. And that's what head coach Casey Kreider really told us when we talked to him before this match that they're, they're doing a lot of things not great, but then they're also doing things that, and as it is called out, so the UMBC players adamant there was a touch, but not getting the call. But as I was saying, Casey Crowder told us, there's things that they could definitely improve on, but there's things that he thinks that they're doing well, and he hopes that they just have this upward trajectory and are continually improving in, in different aspects of the game throughout the season. Mostly back at the service line for the Panthers. And that one out of play off the block. So Belusic continues her strong third set. Four kills for her, still six errors on the night, but she's working her way back. UMBC retakes the lead at 16-15. Akeo, Monks. How about the one-handed set there from Lexis Akeo? Sure. Putting it in the perfect spot for Monks to get that kill and we're knotted again at 16. Such an interesting career trajectory for her. All I see second team way back in 2019. A senior playing time decreased a little bit over the last couple years, but you see how valuable she can be coming off the bench and making an impact there once again. Nice play there by DeMarzi, goes with the curveball. Catches the pit block off guard and UMBC back up one. DeMarzi, another retriever having a pretty strong day. Three kills on four attempts for her to go along with two blocks. Tao Tua to the outside. Nothing going there though as the retrievers pick up a point. Another block for them there. I think it was DeMarzi again, along with Belusic. Two point lead now for the Retrievers. Got a chance to make it three here. Free ball now here for the Panthers. Monks in the middle, strong swing, but the Retrievers stay alive again. Outside, Conte. 
And the Panthers pick up the point. And that ball going out of play off of the swing of Conte. Point going over to the Panthers. But again, one of the best rallies that we've seen. We've had a couple of those here in this third set. Just a great job by both teams offensively and defensively. Emmy Klicka now into the game to serve for Pitt, the junior from Novelty, Ohio. Serve, receive again, a bit of an issue there for the Retrievers. Stafford takes advantage and Pitt ties it up. Those unforced errors just coming at the worst time for this Retrievers team as you were able to hold a lead and then that overpass just ending it as we're not at, again at 18. Outside Conte, really strong swing there on the back line. And UMBC continues to stay alive. You keep thinking Pitt's gonna take the momentum back in this set, but UMBC doing a really nice job of holding them off at least for the time being. Here's Belushich. Outside Babcock, really strong swing again for her. It's kill number eight. And a great job there from Tautua'a. Just kind of holding that block, that middle blocker for UMBC and leaving a lot of space there at that right pin for Olivia Babcock to just tee off on that swing. Yeah, stop us if you've heard that before tonight. Tautua'a having a really strong game again. Conte into the block, but really nice dig there by Grubisic Chabo to keep it alive. Babcock again into the block. Attempt three for Babcock and she finishes it off. And there's a little bit of those youthful legs. Babcock <laughs> just seeming to be able to get up higher and higher as that point went on. You let them hang around long enough, they're gonna take advantage. Pitt leads by one now in set number three. Monks to serve outside. The block again for the Panthers. And that was a rough one off the face of Saren Madone, as we'll have a timeout from UMBC. The Panthers taking their first multi-point lead, which it's been a while since yeah. we've seen one of those for the Panthers, as this third set has really been dominated by UMBC. Yeah, in our conversation with Coach pregame, it's he talked about how tough of a challenge this was going to be for his team, but... They have shown a lot of fight in this third set. I mean, losing as badly as you did in those first two sets, you could easily just pack it in and get the bus ride ready for the way home. But, I mean, they've done a really nice job in this third set. As we mentioned, they've had the lead for most of it, just going down late, that talent gap just becoming a little bit more evident here in the third set. And to their credit, like I mentioned during one of our previous timeouts, their passing has just been so much better mm. in this third set and that just leads to everything and it's not even necessarily just their passing and serve receive it's also their passing defensively on some of the Panthers attacks so you have to credit those backline players in particular you have Hannah Howard the freshman libero for this team but that defense essentially leads to offense and it's kind of one of those things where it's not always as talked about defense as you always look for the big blocks and the big kills that really get all get all of the accolades, but great passing can win you a lot of matches, as we've seen here for them, able to find themselves just two points down to this Pitt Panthers team. They've been doing the little things a lot better here in this third set. It's a big reason why Pitt's on their heels a little bit. Still serving here with a two-point lead as we go down the stretch run in set number three. It'll be Monks to serve. Set a little bit too low there, it looks like, for DeMarzi. And she puts it into the net. Now a three-point lead for the Panthers. And when you're an undersized middle, as DeMarzi is, you really need the ball to be put in that perfect spot and just too far forward and not able to get that ball across the net. 4-0 run now for the Panthers in the closing points of this set number three. And how about a 5-0 run? Panthers found themselves down 18 to 19 and have been able to battle back to be two points away from taking this match as we'll have the Retrievers take their second and final timeout here in this third set. 
UMBC definitely in a really tough spot now. You've lost a lot of that momentum that you gained from earlier on in the set. And you're going against a pit team that is really going on all cylinders right now. Babcock, one of the players, also coming alive here in this third set. She's been excellent all game. But nine kills for her to lead the way for the Panthers, now hitting 423 in this set number three. And again, really just a great showing offensively for all Panthers as a team hitting above 500, which if they can hold that down for the next couple of points here and, and be able to finish out the match, it would be the second time in three games that this Panthers offense has been able to hit over 500 for an entire match. That's a really impressive number against anybody you play. That's a really difficult thing to do. And UMBC has been a pretty strong defensive team here in this third set, so certainly a feather on the cap for the Panthers if they can keep that number up. But bigger concern for them is getting these next two points here to close out this match. Monk still at the service line for the Panthers trying to close this thing out. Have to get a good pass here if you're UMBC. And if you're going to look back at the tape of this game, the attacking error is something you're definitely going to circle. 24 for UMBC, just six for the Panthers. They stay alive. And there was a pass that Emma Monks would love to have back. Not typically a passer as she is a middle blocker for this Panthers team, but after she serves, she needs to stay in and take that passing role, just not able to get her arms in the right position. So UMBC snaps that 5-0 scoring run that Pitt had. Back to the outside, Babcock, a strong swing there, but a good dig on the other end. Tautua again defensively. Stafford, not going to stop her from there, and set or match point coming up for the Panthers. Such a hard dig attempt there from Saren Maiden, and she was trying to get that swing, but so powerful are these Panthers hitters. Babcock serving for the match. Strong dig there from Mosley, but UMBC capitalizes. A little bit of disorganization there for the Panthers. And the Retrievers capitalize. Great first pass from UMBC to be able to get a good attack attempt on that last one. Match point number two for the Panthers. Mosley outside. Another chance here for the Retrievers. Nice job by Klicka. And then Stafford. Another really strong dig there from Howard. Wokolo. Long rally here from both sides. Click a really nice job there defensively. Back to Stafford again. Another dig for the Panthers. That time it was Babcock who gets it right back. Unable to finish it there. This point continues. Tao Tua outside Stafford. Seals the deal for the Panthers. 25-21 in set number three, and that'll finish the sweep. 25-11, 25-12, 25-21 in favor of the Panthers.